The village was a scar upon the land, a canvas of decay painted in shades of grey and black. Fog, thick and heavy, clung to the crumbling stone houses like a shroud. Twisted trees clawed at the sky, their branches gnarled and bare. Silence hung heavy, broken only by the whisper of the wind through the empty streets. No birds sang, no life stirred, only the ghosts of the past lingered. The village of Silford had been consumed by the plague centuries ago, leaving behind an eerie silence that spoke volumes. Emma laughed, the sound jarring against the oppressive silence of Silford. She and her friends, Liam, Maya and Daniel, had come seeking adventure, their backpacks laden with supplies and their spirits high. The ruins of the village, shrouded in eerie tales and local legends, seemed like the perfect place to spend a weekend exploring. They joked and snapped pictures, their youthful energy a stark contrast to the desolation surrounding them. For a brief moment, life flickered in the heart of the dead village. The ancient well lay hidden in the village square, shrouded in shadow and overgrown with weeds. It had been there for centuries, a silent witness to the passage of time, its stones worn smooth by the elements. The villagers spoke of it in hushed tones, sharing tales of its mysterious past and the secrets it held. Some said it was cursed, others believed it was a portal to another world, but no one dared to venture too close for fear of what they might find. Drawn by a strange pull, Emma wandered away from her friends, her hand trailing along the cold, damp stones. She had always been curious, a seeker of the unknown, and the well seemed to call to her, beckoning her closer. The air around it was thick with an unspoken tension, as if the very ground beneath her feet was alive with secrets. She could feel the weight of history pressing down on her, the whispers of those who had come before her echoing in her ears. A chill ran down her spine as she peered into the depths of the well. The darkness seemed to stretch on forever, an abyss that threatened to swallow her whole. She could see nothing but shadows, and yet she felt as if something was staring back at her, watching her every move. Her heart raced and she took a step back, her breath coming in short, shallow gasps. She knew she should leave, but she couldn't tear herself away. A faint, sweet smell rose from the darkness, mingling with the metallic scent of blood. It was a scent that seemed out of place, and yet it felt oddly familiar, as if she had smelled it before in a dream. The mist that rose from the well swirled around her, wrapping her in a cold embrace. She shivered, her skin prickling with goosebumps. The air was thick with an otherworldly presence, and she could feel it pressing down on her, suffocating her. Who's there? She whispered, her voice trembling, but there was no answer only the sound of her own breathing, loud and ragged in the silence. She felt a sudden rush of fear, her heart pounding in her chest. She wanted to run, to get as far away from the well as possible, but her feet felt rooted to the ground. She thought she saw a flicker of movement at the edge of her vision, a fleeting glimpse of a white figure disappearing into the fog. It was there for only a moment, and then it was gone leaving her wondering if she had imagined it. The fog seemed to close in around her, the world growing smaller and more confined. She felt a sense of dread, a feeling that something terrible was about to happen. A whisper, cold and ethereal, brushed against her ear, sending shivers down her spine. It was a voice she didn't recognize, and yet it felt intimately familiar as if it had been with her all her life. The words were indistinct, a murmur of sound that she couldn't quite make out, but the tone was clear, a warning, a plea for help. She felt a surge of emotion, a mix of fear and sadness, and she knew she had to find out what the voice was trying to tell her. It spoke of death and decay, of a curse that lingered. Then, silence. The village around her seemed to hold its breath, the air heavy with anticipation. She felt a connection to the place, a sense of belonging that she couldn't explain. The well was more than just a relic of the past. 
It was a gateway to something greater, something that transcended time and space. And she knew deep in her heart that she was meant to uncover its secrets, to lift the curse that had plagued the village for generations. With a deep breath, she steeled herself for the journey ahead, ready to face whatever lay in the darkness. The next morning, I awoke with a gasp. The remnants of a nightmare clung to my consciousness, fading like mist in the morning sun. My heart pounded in my chest, a frantic rhythm that matched the urgency of my breath. A cold sweat clung to my skin, chilling me to the bone despite the warmth of the blankets. I could feel each droplet trickling down my face, a stark reminder of the fever that had gripped me through the night. My limbs felt heavy, as if filled with lead. Every movement was a struggle, a battle against the invisible weight that pinned me down. I tried to sit up, but my body resisted, protesting with every fiber of my being. A dull ache pulsed behind her eyes, a relentless throb that seemed to sink with the pounding of her heart. It was as if her very thoughts were being squeezed, compressed into a tight, painful knot. The ache intensified with each beat of her heart, sending sharp, stabbing pains through her temples. She pressed her fingers to her forehead, trying to massage away the discomfort, but it was no use. She looked around the small, abandoned cottage they had chosen as their base. The walls were cracked and peeling. The floorboards creaked with every step, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. It was a far cry from the safety and comfort they had once known. Her breath caught in her throat as she took in the scene. The once cosy space now felt like a prison, its dilapidated state mirroring the despair that had settled in her heart. Liam lay on his makeshift bed, his face flushed and beaded with sweat. His skin was pale, almost translucent, and his eyes were closed in a fitful sleep. He looked so fragile, so vulnerable, and it broke my heart to see him like this. He coughed, a deep, rattling sound that echoed through the empty room. Each cough seemed to shake his entire body, leaving him gasping for breath. I wanted to help him, to ease his suffering, but I felt so helpless. Maya and Daniel fared no better. Their faces were pale and drawn, their eyes sunken and hollow. They lay side by side, their bodies curled up in a futile attempt to conserve warmth. They looked like shadows of their former selves, their strength sapped by the relentless illness. Their breathing was shallow and raspy, each inhale a struggle. The sound of their labored breaths filled the room, a constant reminder of the dire situation we were in. It was a symphony of suffering, a chorus of pain that echoed in my ears. Fear, cold and sharp, pierced through Emma's growing unease. Something was terribly wrong. The illness had struck them all with a sudden brutal force, leaving them weak and defenseless. She couldn't shake the feeling that this was no ordinary sickness. There was a malevolence to it, a darkness that seemed to seep into their very souls. Emma knew they had to find help, and fast. But in this desolate place, hope was a scarce commodity. The weight of their predicament pressed down on her, threatening to crush her spirit. But she couldn't afford to give in to despair. Not now, not when they needed her the most. Panic seized us. It was as if the very air around us had turned into a living entity, feeding off our fear and amplifying it. The fog was thick almost tangible, wrapping around us like a shroud. We could barely see a few feet ahead, and every shadow seemed to hide some unseen terror. We had to get out, to escape the suffocating grip of the village. The fog was not just a natural phenomenon. It felt malevolent, as if it had a will of its own, pushing us back, trying to keep us trapped within its cold embrace. The village, once a place of comfort and familiarity, had transformed into a nightmarish labyrinth. The suffocating mist clung to us, making every breath a struggle. We could hear the distant cries of others, equally lost and desperate, but their voices only added to the sense of dread. Gathering our meager belongings, we moved with a sense of urgency. Every second counted. The dim light inside the cottage flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. 
We grabbed what we could, knowing that material possessions meant little in the face of survival. We stumbled out of the cottage and into the fog-choked streets. The ground was uneven, and the thick fog made it difficult to see where we were going. We held on to each other, trying to stay together, but the fog seemed to pull us apart, isolating us in our own pockets of fear. Each step was an effort, our bodies heavy and racked with pain. The cold seeped into our bones, making our movements sluggish. It felt as if we were wading through a thick, invisible sludge, every step a monumental task. Our bodies were heavy and racked with pain. Exhaustion was setting in, but we couldn't afford to stop. The fear of what lay behind us was greater than the pain we felt. We pushed on, driven by a primal instinct to survive. The village, once eerily silent, now seemed to pulse with unseen life. The fog had a way of distorting sounds, making them seem closer and more menacing. Every creak, every rustle sent shivers down our spines. It was as if the village itself was alive, watching us, waiting for us to falter. Whispers followed them, slithering through the fog, carrying with them the stench of decay and the promise of death. The whispers were unintelligible, but their tone was unmistakable, malevolent and mocking. They seemed to come from all directions, making it impossible to pinpoint their source. The fog carried with it the stench of decay and the promise of death. The air was thick with the smell of rot, and the ground beneath our feet felt unstable, as if it could give way at any moment. The sense of impending doom was palpable, hanging over us like a dark cloud. We ran, our breath rasping in our chests, our hearts pounding like drums. The cold air burned our lungs, but we couldn't stop. The fear was a constant companion, urging us to keep moving, to not look back. Our eyes darted from side to side, searching for the source of the whispers, for the escape that seemed to elude us. Every shadow seemed to move, every sound seemed amplified. The fog played tricks on our minds, making it difficult to distinguish between reality and illusion. The escape that seemed to elude us. The road ahead was endless, disappearing into the thick mist. We were lost, both physically and mentally, but we couldn't give up. We had to find a way out to break free from the fog's suffocating grip. It was a skeletal monument to a forgotten faith, yet it offered a glimmer of hope in the deepening despair. The old church loomed before them, its stone walls crumbling, its stained glass windows long shattered. We stumbled through the arched doorway, the heavy wooden door creaking shut behind us like a tomb sealing itself. Inside, the air hung heavy with the scent of mildew and decay, the silence broken only by our ragged breathing. We huddled together, our eyes wide with fear, our bodies trembling with cold and the relentless advance of the sickness. 